I've been kind of excited with the information we've been hearing today. I don't know about you all. When, when, I, when I learn something that's new to me about vitamin C, I'm like a, a kid on Christmas Day. I tell you what, this is great. Thank you, Suzanne, as well as everybody else. Now, <clears throat> you saw that, for those who didn't see the delightful video this morning, we have iron filings in cereal. So I'm going to take it from there. And I have references you could go to on PubMed. That was the, now, <clears throat> I redid the same thing that I did on the video a couple months ago, same iron, okay? Specifically, it's when you see on the label reduced iron, when you completely reduce iron, it's no longer uh, has a valence, which means it's metallic iron. So reduced iron, when you see it, means metal iron. Now, uh, just for the sake of argument, <clears throat> just to prove myself I wasn't misunderstanding basic chemistry, I went and got supplemental iron at Walmart, ferrous sulfate, dissolved it completely, ran a magnet all over it, nothing comes out. So uh, iron that's in a uh, valence state is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about metallic iron. <clears throat> now, I got some Quaker oatmeal. Here's the, uh, and you'll see, you have two categories. You have the ingredients, and then you have down at the bottom, and then you have the breakdown percentage-wise of what's in there. Uh, you'll see iron, it says 40% of the daily value is in one packet. Well, that should be 2 or 3%, okay? Now, I looked at nine of these packets together. That's very small volume, I might add, and put it in the blender just like everything else, and there's a huge amount. This is what we found in nine small packets of enriched oatmeal. And that, just like you saw in the video this morning, that's metal filings. <clears throat> now, uh, Obviously, iron can occur in a normal valence state inside food. So you're not very often going to see a label that says zero iron. There are some things that have zero iron, it should, but most of them, if they have some iron, but there's no iron added, like wheat flour without iron added might be 4 to 6%. When you start spiking it with enrichment, it goes up to 10, 12, 15%. So as a general rule, it turns out, probably because people that eat organic and gluten-free, the manufacturers know that these are a set of subset of people that don't want you to mess with their food. That's my assumption. But organic food products, roughly 90%, not 100%, and gluten-free products, roughly 90%, not 100%, have no iron added. Okay? So, and I'll make this point later on, when you go on a gluten-free diet, you're also inadvertently going on an iron-free diet. And this has very important ramifications. In the Spanish and Mexican markets, rather than enriched, you see fortificata. <clears throat> Incredibly enough, you go online and you see they actually have the gall to call certain iron filings food grade. Uh, I just present it for your hilarity. <clears throat> now, these iron supplements that get added, the iron filings are typically the waste product of the grinding, filing, or milling of finished iron products that would otherwise be discarded. So you can see a little of the economic motivation there. Now, for those who, because I had this very same thought when I first did my video 20 years ago, I said, it's just inconceivable to me that somewhere along the line, somebody is deliberately adding iron filings to this process. Well, lo and behold, in 2004, I got an email from a lady in Australia who told me some nice things and then highlighted in the yellow, I'll, I'll read it for you. P.S. I also enjoyed the video. 
About 25 years ago, 25 years ago, I worked for the sanitarium country company in Australia and I witnessed them adding about a cup of iron filings to the rotating oven every time they processed a new batch of cornflakes. Just plain old iron filings it was. So it's actually that obvious, actually that flagrant, okay? So don't wonder about it, it happens and that's how they do it. <clears throat> the uh, post company, somebody ran uh, uh, a question to the post company. I'm talking a little fast, I'm, I'm trying to give you uh, a half, uh, an hour's worth of information in half an hour. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'd slow down and take a breath. Uh, <clears throat> they said that they use reduced iron and they actually say it's a mineral salt derived from iron. So see, they don't even know what the hell they're talking about. It's not a salt. It's metallic iron. Now, some products do have supplemental forms of iron added to it. Those are also horrible. They're just not as horrible as metallic iron filings because metallic iron filings do a few additional noxic, toxic things <clears throat> that plain old supplemental iron does not do. But make no doubt about it. Supplemental iron, when you're already iron replete, is highly toxic to you and increases oxidative stress throughout your body as well as in your intestinal tract being a primary cause of leaky gut syndrome. <clears throat> now, just to show that these things have a strong analogy, I'm going to take a brief deviation of the fluoridation of your water. In the production of chemical phosphate fertilizers, they have the water-based wet scrubber hydrofluosilicic acid that has significant levels of lead, arsenic, and mercury in it. They take it out of the chimneys, they put it in open air storage lakes, and they produce millions of gallons of this. And if it were not put in our water supply, they would have to spend millions of dollars getting it taken care of as hazardous waste. So talk about a double whammy they avoid having to take, uh, to spend money to dispose of it and make money giving it to us, okay? When I was in Colorado Springs about 10 years ago, we successfully fought against water fluoridation, but when I saw all the he said, she said going on, we took a new tact, we, the group I was with, and decided we weren't gonna just argue whether fluoride was good or bad for you. We took a, a campaign called Info. It's not fluoride only and said, all right, if you're going to fluoridate our water, use pharmacologically pure fluoride and don't be putting contaminated, contaminated fluoride. And I don't know if that was the point, but we won the day in Colorado Springs still is it fluoridated. <clears throat> all right, now, enriched products. It's very important to understand this is a lot more than bread. This is anything that is wheat-related, bread, cake, cookies, mixes, pasta, rice, coating mixes for frying or baking, and just about anything that's in a box because one way or another, it's in there, okay? Uh, you limit yourself to fresh meats, fruits, and vegetables, and gluten-free and organic flour products, but read the labels because there's like about 10% that are still enriched in spite of it. So don't ever eat anything that you haven't read the label on. <clears throat> now, I don't know how many of you are thinking about this, but what about the babies? What about the babies? This applies to all baby formulas, all baby cereal products. <sighs> If you, have any, if you have an infant or one in your family, daughter, granddaughter, whatever, right away, buy the blender, get organic foods, and make your own. Do not ever buy. I mean, read the label. I mean, if you could find a Gerber that uh, doesn't have something added to a pureed vegetable, fine. But as far as all the formula, which is deliberately enriched, and all the cereal products, they're all contaminated. You ever wonder why? Brand new babies who have no type of disease at all yet start cramping so much after many of their meals. What do you think happens when a normal gut encounters foreign bodies in the form of metallic iron? 
There's a reason plants exist. It's to make things inorganic, organic. Okay? You shouldn't eat iron, metallic iron anymore. You should eat metallic copper, metallic chromium, anything else. Otherwise, we could just take a, uh, a, a lever or something and grind some fresh metal on your pasta. <laughs> <clears throat> now, when did this asininity start? Why did it start? I really think it's stupidity rather than malicious, okay? And the stupidity is worldwide in impoverished countries where so many children have nothing of substance at all to eat, they truly don't get enough dietary iron and they have iron deficiency anemias, and then somewhere along the line, somebody bright in the United States got the idea that we're never gonna let an American have an iron deficiency anemia. We are going to start supplementing iron in every way possible. And not only did they successfully do that, they got every other damn country in the world doing it as well, okay? In spite of the fact that I could cite you as many articles as I could for vitamin C showing how toxic iron is above the minimal level that you need for a normal blood count. Iron is the primary way in which you increase intracellular oxidative stress, have malignant transformation, and have chronic degenerative disease everywhere. <clears throat> now, see this I said about gluten-free, Quaker has what they call a gluten-free oatmeal, and look at that, just whole, whole grain oats, nothing else in it, okay, that would be fine. Uh, in Colombia, they have corn flour, and here uh, it's, uh, they say nothing added, and, there, and there's no fortificata there. So uh, the, the foreign countries, the South American countries, they enrich just like we do, but not quite as much. You're going to have a better chance, I suspect, because enrichment costs a few pennies more for each product. So it's a very low-grade economic motivation. This is cute. Cream of rice, and you see this all the time. Rice has no gluten anyway, but they're, they're relying on you not knowing that, so they're telling you they have gluten-free cream of rice, but with an absolute ton of iron added. I don't know, the 70% uh, of your, quote, daily requirement for iron is in one portion that should read zero. <clears throat> Iron enriched rice, okay? Now you can eat rice uh, that's enriched because it's soaked in a solution. So you put it in a colander, run water over it, and you'll see it comes out milky, immediately milky. You keep on washing it for 30 seconds to 45 seconds, and the water comes out clear. You can have that rice without any worries. Basmati, which is a delicious rice, for some reason, they seem to leave it alone. The only ingredient in this package of basmati rice is basmati rice. Now, to underline the insane mindset that the public health authorities still have about iron, still somehow thinking that we need all this iron, I don't know if you can read that or not, I'll read that first sentence for you. Genetically modified rice that incorporates two-fold to three-fold increased amounts of iron is being developed. Man, talk about the inmates in charge of the asylum. This is just crazy. Uh, Iron-free and gluten-free pasta. Now here, most of the time, if it's enriched, they'll also specifically mention iron, but not all the time. So you still, if you just see the word enriched, or you just see the word fortified, or in Spanish, fortificata, it's got iron. Organic pasta, no added iron. Now, cheap rules. Walt, Walmart, there's no cheaper place on the planet than Walmart, okay? And... Once I decided I would eat wheat again, that's another story I'll get into in a moment, uh, I was not going to eat any iron. And so all oh, my favorite pastries and everything, you go to 
any regular supermarket, and every one of their pastries, donuts, everything is enriched wheat flour. But when it's enriched, they're taking something that they'd have to pay for and add it to it. Well, what does Walmart do? They cut out the enrichment. Unbleached wheat flour, nothing else added. And this was on a number of other things. I even found a Walmart pot pie without enrichment. So, but you got to read the labels. I, I mean, I, I think the uh, people at Walmart thought I was crazy with my cell phone, uh, go, going through the aisles, uh, taking pictures of all these labels. OK. <clears throat> now, why is all this iron so bad? A few facts about iron, OK? Increased oxidative stress increases iron. And ferritin is the blood test you want to look for when you're looking at iron storage, OK? Serum iron levels, total iron binding capacity, those are all fine and good, but they don't tell you anything at all about whether or not you have a high, uh, a, a low normal, a normal level of iron stored in your body. In children, Ferritin levels about 20, average about 25%. This is because they haven't had a long period of time of being exposed to iron in their food. But that's already getting in the slightly too high range, which I'll tell you in a moment. LabCorp lists a normal ferritin level as 30 to 400 reference range. That is 100% abnormal. Everything 30 or above is abnormal amount of iron. Why would they list it as reference range or normal? How do they derive those ranges? They derive them by looking at an average group of adults, seeing where the statistical deviations bear out, and then spitting that out. So all that's telling you and confirming for you is that everybody is iron toxic. Why? Because everybody is eating this horribly, chronically contaminated food. You cannot have a ferritin level too low if your hemoglobin and hematocrit levels are normal. OK? Now, <clears throat> a lot of docs, a lot of patients would be happy with a ferritin level of 50. Wow, that's, that's in the low normal range. Well, look at the study they did on blood donors. High frequency blood donors with a mean ferritin level of 17 has significantly improved arterial elasticity compared to donors with a mean ferritin level of 52. Ergo, 52 is too much, OK? So you have people with insanely high numbers. I mean, when you start getting two, three, and 400, you're getting an imminent heart attack range, OK? And you got to get it out. You got to get chelators. You got to start doing far infrared sauna, uh, inositol, hexaphosphate whole bunch of things, and even sometimes prescription iron chelators. <clears throat> now, when you reduce iron levels by phlebotomy, you decrease lipid peroxidation and oxidative stress. And they show how when you already have patients, no cancer, and you phlebotomize them, which is a reliable way of taking their iron out of their system, you substantially increased their chance of new cancer cases. Same way blood donation, phlebotomy, also clearly statistically decreases your chance of a heart attack. Conversely, when you look at atherosclerotic plaques in the heart that block it off, there are substantially elevated levels of iron and that other lovely metal that I've told you about, copper. Okay, iron, copper, calcium, never Never, never supplement in any capacity, period. <clears throat> now, this I found kind of amusing because you run around and then you see some of these people redoing the same sort of experiment that I showed you with the iron filings. And they're saying, but it's okay. The acid in the stomach uh, dissolves the iron and everything's fine. Well, you know what happens when you take elemental metallic iron and add hydrochloric acid, you get ferric chloride, a substance that's toxic, highly corrosive, and acidic that has its own significant morbidity and mortality. 
combined with the fact that very little is going to reach the acid before it gets into the duodenum and small intestine anyway. So, so what happens when you put metallic iron in the intestine? A foreign body reaction. And since the iron is not one big hunk of iron, and you'd have a big foreign body reaction, it's tiny filamentous iron, you just have a diffuse foreign body reaction throughout the entire intestine. And when this becomes chronic, which probably is the case after you've been on these foods for a week or two of your life, much less years, that's a chronic inflammatory response. Well, guess what chronic inflammation in the intestine is? It's increased permeability, a.k.a. leaky gut syndrome. Okay? What does leaky gut syndrome do? It permits huge portions of your diet that would normally be broken down into amino acids, carbohydrates, and the building blocks of your food and allows partial to whole protein getting into your lymphatics and into your bloodstream, causing a strong antigenic response. So, <clears throat> good health, as I think we know, because we had a presentation in the other room, is virtually centered on having and maintaining a healthy gut. When you have metallic and or supplement or iron. If you start taking ferrous sulfate, we have the, pro the papers to show you, you inflame the cells in the intestinal lining just as effectively. You just don't have the foreign body reaction on top of it all. So you get a leaky inflamed gut. You get incomplete digestion. You get premature absorption. You, with premature absorption, you start getting food rotting, more toxins. You get this incompletely digested, sometimes whole food getting into the lymphatics, and you initiate and propagate chronic autoimmune reactions. You ever wonder why kids are dying from peanuts these days? In my day, you had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and you took it to school, and nobody was dying. I'm going to show you why that is. You also have, with your incomplete digestion, you have poor assimilation of nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. You get focal infections in the gut, diverticuli, appendix, gastric and duodenal ulcers. Okay, we know about Helicobacter pylori. Well, guess what? Helicobacter pylori is a pathogen that thrives on iron. So how do you think you're ever gonna get rid of ulcer disease if you're feeding it iron every day as well? Crohn's disease and chronic ulcerative colitis, celiac sprue, gluten sensitivity, Every disease in the body is worsened substantially by this chronic ingestion of iron in almost all of the foods you eat unless you're eating just fresh, fresh fruits, vegetables, and meats. Now, very possibly because of this, the main benefit of an organic diet is it doesn't have iron in it. Okay? Now... <clears throat> Getting toward the end. Well, guess what now? Do a little research on the internet. I said, I wonder when they first started adding iron to the diet. And there it is. Refined grains have been enriched since 1941 with iron and 3B vitamins. But the 3B vitamins just got kind of thrown in. They were, they were concerned about getting iron in there. That was the biggie. And the B vitamins, no big deal. Well, fact, this started in 1941. When I just start thinking about the groups, populations of individuals that start accumulating iron from 1941, and then try to predict what's going to happen with that. <clears throat> well, since 1948, when they started studying it, probably it happened since 1941, but they studied it since 1948 and found that since then, celiac sprue has increased fourfold, 400%. Think that's a coincidence? I don't think there are coincidences in science. Now I pose the question to you, how toxic would gluten be in a normal rather than a chronically inflamed gut? 
You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you gluten is wonderful. I'm not going to tell you they haven't messed with wheat products genetically and we have things in there that we don't want in there. But gluten's just a protein. And some proteins are more antigenic than others, like the, pro like the protein in peanuts is more antigenic than others. Some things, not so antigenic. But bottom line is, when you get a whole, intact, or minimally digested protein across a leaky gut, into the lymphatics, and into the blood, you are set up for disease and destruction and premature death. Now, I'm not advising anyone with a known gluten sensitivity to start ingesting gluten. But what I will tell you, and this was my personal experience, <clears throat> three or four years ago, I decided gluten was awful, reading wheat belly, etc. So I said, I got to give this stuff up. I really had no idea what effect it was going to have on me. And I, up to that point in time, I'd had chronic arthritis in this thumb for three years. I did everything imaginable to help it. Nothing helped it. A week after stopping gluten, it stopped hurting. I said, I can't believe it. So I continued on it. Three or four months later, I was in Las Vegas. I said, I'm tired of this diet. I'm fine. I'm going to have a whole bunch of bread, wake up in the middle of the night, and my thumb's hurting. I said, son of a bitch, I'm off gluten for life. <laughs> well, three or four months later, six to seven to eight months after I first went off gluten, I just couldn't drive by McDonald's anymore. <laughs> and I had a hamburger, and I was fine. And so from that point on, I went on what I call my gluten light diet, which I have been on since for several years now with no recurrence. The point I would make to you is, except for maybe a very advanced case of celiac sprue, where you have total breakdown of the villi inside the intestine, if you truly get rid of the thing that's causing that, aka iron in your diet, in six to seven months, your gut can legitimately heal. And once your gut legitimately heals and there's no leaky gut, proteins such as gluten can be just subjected to normal digestion again, okay? Now, again, I'm not here to paint gluten as a good guy, but the bad guy is the iron, and gluten is getting all the blame. Now, a 2010 study in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, 1997, 0.4% peanut allergies. Since then, peanut allergies have gone up 400%. Peanut allergies were not even mentioned in the literature prior to 1980. Okay, so that's how long it took for these generations. Also, cumulative toxins. Okay, what the else are we doing now? We have GMO fluid with glyphosate. Toxins are synergistic. Okay, I'm not telling you everything's going to be perfect if you get iron out of your diet, but I'm going to tell you you're taking a big thorn out of your side when you do, <coughs> and you're reducing substantially the cumulative toxic burden that provokes all food allergies, okay? Uh, on food allergies, rather than just specific peanuts, uh, in 1991, uh, 1971, there were about 100 food allergy articles a year. The year 2,500, the year 2014, 1,400. So this toxic synergy, along with what we still have not addressed, which is the insane adding of iron to our diet, these food allergies are exploding. Now, so I'll finish up here. Number one, no iron supplementation. Remember, iron is the primary provocateur of the Fenton reaction inside the cell. The primary generator of increased oxidative stress, and what have we said all day long, increased oxidative stress is all disease. So it's going to aggravate and magnify 
any disease you have anywhere in your body. It's going to make your Alzheimer's worse. It's going to make your peptic ulcer disease worse. It's going to make your hypertension worse. It's going to accelerate your atherosclerosis. It's going to worsen your kidney function. All disease is oxidative stress. And iron, to, with, to a lesser degree, copper, is the kingpin of oxidative stress in your body. The body needs to be able to kill cells as readily as it nurtures cells. Okay, death is a part of life in, in the body. So you need ways, and the body does it by manipulating iron, manipulating copper, and manipulating calcium to allow cells that should be killed and died and removed to be removed. But when you mess with nature and you start taking in large amounts of this, you just accelerate the process when there was no disease ahead of time. Number two, the entire range of normal of ferritin, iron levels in the body of the population, is outside of the range of normal. Okay? <clears throat> ah, God, there, there has to be less than one-tenth of one percent, less than one-hundredth of one percent uh, of individuals uh, 50 and over that have a ferritin level less than 25, which we've shown through these articles is what your real normal level is. Number three, metallic iron ingestion, which is still, after 20 years, the primary form of iron that they put in our food, causes gut inflammation and predisposes to literally all gut-related diseases, which in turn aggravates all non-gut-related conditions because once you start causing allergies and antibody antigen reactions, you send everything in your body down the tubes. Number four, gluten sensitivity might be a curable condition in some individuals, especially if they haven't advanced to full-blown celiac sprue, but just have the sensitivity with minimal physiological changes in the microvilli, might be a curable uh, condition when all food iron supplementation is removed and the gut damage and that iron exposure is gone for at least a six month period of time. And then finally, even supplemental versus the metallic fire filings will promote chronic gut inflammation. So if you do have a hypochromic microcytic anemia secondary to iron deficiency, by all means, take your iron supplement, but just remember two things. You stop the iron supplement as soon as your anemia is resolved and be prepared to have the upset stomach because that's exactly why iron supplements are so nauseating is because they're directly causing inflammation in the gastrointestinal cells to which they're exposed. And what you missed in the, in the uh, video today was my last thought, which is bon appetit. Thank you.